Those daring young men in their flying machines put themselves and North Carolina in the aviation history books for all time. After the Wright brothers' successful flight in 1903, the race began to see who could fly higher, faster, and longer, and who could add his name to the next aeronautical record. Flying fever hit Winston-Salem particularly hard in 1919. The local newspapers followed closely the exploits of Belvin W. Maynard, a North Carolina-born World War I pilot who won the first transcontinental air derby, flying from New York to San Francisco in record time. Maynard flew this race and many others with a mechanic named Sergeant William Klein and a German shepherd named Trixie. Nationally known as the Flying Parson, he was an ordained Baptist minister who studied at Wake Forest College before he entered the air service in 1917. He served in France as an airplane tester, and while performing this job, he established the world record of 318 loop-de-loops. During his 17 months in France, he flew every de Havilland plane assembled at Roma Ranton, setting a record of 22 planes in one morning. The Winston-Salem Board of Trade Leaders, represented by J.S. Kuykendall, could see many possibilities in the aviation industry and were eager to study how they might participate. Kuykendall, along with over 40 citizens and businessmen, established a company, sold stock for $5 a share, and located land on the Kernersville Road between Watown and Kernersville. The field originally consisted of 35 acres of stumps, bushes, and rocks which had to be cleared. The longest runway was 1,890 feet running southwest to northeast. There was a gas station with a telephone so that transportation into Winston-Salem could be arranged. Maynard Field was the name selected for Winston-Salem's first airfield, so named to honor the young North Carolina pilot and his accomplishments. Lieutenant Maynard accepted the invitation to attend the dedication and became the first pilot to land at the new Maynard Field on December 6, 1919. As he flew in for the ceremonies, he performed acrobatic maneuvers for the crowd in the same de Havilland 4 he flew to San Francisco, which he nicknamed Hello Frisco. Mayor Goral graded Maynard, who presented Goral a copy of that day's New York Times. Everyone wanted to get close to the famous pilot, and many autographed his plane. After speeches and congratulations were said, Maynard was the guest of honor at a reception at Forsyth Country Club. Lieutenant Maynard planned to fly to Savannah the next day, but was detained in the city by bad weather. Local citizens were hoping the weather would hold because he promised to preach in church on Sunday if he could not fly. But the weather cleared and he left on Sunday morning, although he did revisit the field later, which bore his name. Maynard often stopped in Raleigh. Once on a trip to Clinton near his hometown, Governor Thomas Bickett flew with Maynard to Wake Forest and back, wearing the mechanic's flight gear. Later, Maynard posed with Raleigh businessmen and children on a stop in the capital city in 1920. He wrote articles about his flights and even wrote a book entitled From Pulpit to Cockpit and Back Again. In April 1922, Maynard performed the first wedding ever held in an airplane over Times Square in New York City. Just five months later, while demonstrating a Messerschmitt fighter plane at a fair in Vermont, the plane crashed and Maynard was killed. His casket was carried in a horse-drawn wagon through the streets of New York. He was buried in the family cemetery in Sampson County as Fort Bragg planes flew overhead and showered flowers on the funeral gathering. Wake Forest College honored Lieutenant Maynard with a bronze plaque telling of his accomplishments. In a twist of fate, the plaque came to Winston-Salem in 1955 when Wake Forest College relocated here and now hangs on a stairwell wall in Wake Chapel. Maynard Field was accepted by the government, mapped for Army use, and designated as the midway stop for planes going from New York to New Orleans. It was used as an airfield exclusively until 1927 when Charles Lindbergh selected it as a stop on his goodwill tour. Maynard Field had no expansion space, and consensus was that Winston-Salem needed a larger field for the growing number and size of airplanes coming into the city. A new airport was built, and Lindbergh landed there in 1927. Today, Maynard Field is covered with homes, and only someone with a knowledgeable eye can detect the flattened area around Corbin Street and Maynard Drive. Here is where early pilots once took off and landed, advancing the cause of aviation, taking chances with a fledgling industry, and leaving behind only memories and tales of their daring exploits in a city's history book.